We have another guest, um, Nathan Biggs, who is the CEO of House of Brick. So House of Brick is probably the foremost consultant in the area of VMware for Oracle. And we talk about Oracle a lot. Hi, Nathan. Good Hi, Dave. Good to see you. Thanks for coming on. This is my yeah. co-host, John Hi, Furrier. Nice to meet you, Nathan. Oracle. You know, House we, of Blues, House of Bricks. We love I mean, Oracle. Right. Oracle, right. Brick. And, uh, we love VMware. <laughs> Oracle, VMware, kind of different strategies, right? But uh, kind of different strategies. <laughs> <laughs> so, as an Oracle developer, so they're a hypervisor. So company, House <laughs> of Brick, basically, as I say, is the foremost uh, VMware Oracle consultant on the planet. You guys have done an incredible job. We have some of the smartest people that. That, that we've met. Um, and but basically, you specialize in in taking business critical and mission critical applications and uh, that are Oracle based and running them on VMware. That's right. So. Um, we all know the success that server virtualization has had. Server virtualization has really exploded. Um, it has uh, allowed us to cut costs, to, to really uh, 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 improve operating efficiencies and, and improve agility. Um, and now we're seeing more and more of the application portfolio kind of chunk into uh, VMware. Right? So right. you talk to customers maybe three or four years ago, a very small portion of the application portfolio was virtualized, and now today it's much, much higher. Can we set the stage first? We have a lot of audience out there that might not know yeah. the inner workings of Oracle VMware competition. So let's just, Dave, set the stage for the folks out there about Oracle. I mean, yeah. I have my own opinion, but you know, you got Oracle, the big, Larry Ellison owns a yacht, big power, iron fist, VMware, the new EMC, spin out, virtualization, open, ecosystem, Paul Moritz, Wintel, Pat yeah. Gelsinger. Oracle's like the big bad bully Right, and VMware's the up and comer. So here's the know? deal. It's, it's, it's pretty straightforward now, especially since Sun was acquired by Oracle. Oracle essentially wants to own the world, and they understand that by vertically integrating as many pieces of the stack as possible, it can increase its revenue, increase its profits, and its competitive advantage. That's clearly Oracle's strategy. Now, one of the things that Oracle did, uh, well, probably about two years ago, is went out and bought a small company in Massachusetts called Virtual Iron. Virtual Iron essentially is a little virtualization platform, not nearly as robust as VMware, but it allowed Oracle to say, hey, we have that too, buy ours, it's, it's better, because we're Oracle, they say everything that they have is better. They're very brilliant marketeers. Now, so what they've done is they've bundled essentially everything in to their stack, the hardware, the software, the applications, and of course, very importantly, the database. Here comes VMware. VMware is a software company. Any software company is essentially the enemy of Oracle, and uh, because Oracle wants to own the software business, and so VMware is now starting to somewhat democratize the software business by consolidating, uh, lowering the number of servers, servers, making Oracle potentially less expensive. Um, Oracle doesn't like that, it's going to lose control of that play, so Oracle tries to fight it a little bit. At the same time, Oracle realizes a lot of people want to go to VMware, so it has to provide support. There's nothing technically about VMware that won't you know, support Oracle, uh, but Oracle wants to get as much of that pie as possible. So it, it'll, it'll maybe trip the competition, maybe throw them in a little elbow as they're running into the boards, and uh, Oracle's being very aggressive, trying to buy time while it can build up the robustness of its, of its platform. Enter companies like House of Brick. You have, you know VMware inside and out, right. you, know, or, you know Oracle inside and out, you got great customer relationships, and what you say is, yeah. look, we can make this stuff work, we can help drive business value. That's where right. we are today. Right? Well, the, the biggest reasons that people are not virtualizing Oracle on VMware are not technical, like you said, Dave. They're, uh, the reasons that people are not virtualizing Oracle are emotional. They're political. Uh, and, and Oracle does a good job, as the reasons that you mentioned, that uh, they like to preserve their, their license revenue. And so there are reasons why they don't want people to virtualize. But there are so many great advantages for virtualizing Oracle stacks on VMware that, uh, that really people need to consider that. Like what? Well, the number one reason that people consider is, is cost savings. And so that's a big driver for people. That has been with VMware for a long time. Uh, people have been consolidating servers and, and they're realizing some tremendous cost savings. But there are other advantages when you consider virtualizing tier one applications, such as uh, high availability, uh, even working uh, hand in hand with Oracle real application clusters, an Oracle rack and a, and a VMware HA combination together is just a, a sweet solution for, for HA, for tier one uh, customers. Uh, there's uh, the, the optimization of the, uh, of the uh, application development lifecycle. 
people can uh, can dramatically reduce their their life cycle time, but also improve the uh, the uh, the quality of their application releases. So those are just a couple that. Uh, yeah. So that we had a uh, we had a peer insight on Wikibon.org last week. Uh, Nathan, you participated in yep. that. Uh, we had a bunch of users on uh, that were participating in the call. And, and the, the findings out of that call, we were presenting some research from uh, wikibon.org, from David Floyer's uh, research. And our findings were that the vast majority of applications uh, out there are candidates for virtualization, including Oracle applications. Now, there are some that don't make sense to virtualize. You know, the, 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 the highest, mission, most mission critical applications probably don't make Makes sense, although you would you would debate that, so we should we should have that discussion. But generally speaking, the vast majority makes sense. We agree on that. Um, we also found that Oracle sometimes will certify uh, VMware on, on, on Oracle uh, or Oracle on VMware, especially if you pay them through the nose, like in the pharmaceutical industry. Other times, maybe they're not so supportive. Um, they'll drag their feet. Um, especially for smaller customers that don't pay them as much. Now, you guys have had some success there, I realize that, but so there's a lot of research on Wikibon around this that shares our findings. But, um, but what are you seeing? I mean, this whole notion of, of actually bringing mission critical applications to, to, uh, uh, to VMware. A lot of people say, hey, unless the ISV supports it straight out and certifies it, there's no way I'm doing it, it's too risky. What's your angle on that? Well, you need to pay attention to the difference between uh, support from Oracle and certification from Oracle. Uh, Oracle, in their support statement, it's it's on on MetaLink or My Oracle support. It's two four nine two one two dot one. That's the VMware support statement from Oracle, and it says that they will support all Oracle technologies running on VMware. Now, but they say they don't certify. And so there's a difference between certification and support. Our, our customers are getting great support from Oracle. We've heard of, of cases, although we haven't ex experienced it ourselves, where Oracle has asked them to replatform their, their Oracle workloads onto physical. When there's a problem. When there's a problem that they haven't onto physical, Recreate before. the problem onto physical and then we'll support it. That's now right. We, but, but you've certainly heard cases directly. I mean, we were on the call we, the other we day. We have heard the, cases, yeah. yes. But, but with our customers and, and, and uh, you know, maybe it's just the way that we work with their customers, but, but they're getting good support from Oracle. Well, but see, I have a theory on this. Okay. I've been thinking about this because I said, geez, Nathan, I mean, you guys are the foremost experts in, in Oracle virtualization particularly on VMware, and I said, how come you're not seeing this? And I think I have the reason. The reason is because your stuff works. You're, you're <laughs> doing, you know how to make Oracle work in, in VMware. We so do, you're indeed. not having the same types of problems that right. many other customers are having. I think that's got to be a big reason. So you well, guys are I, getting great that's support. That's a good point, yeah. <laughs> Because you know what you're doing. A lot of customers are running it blind. You need to get help. Either you need to have in-house people that have you know, super expertise, or you got to go outside. I mean, that's the bottom line. The benefits will certainly offset the cost of hiring that consultant in many, many cases. Yeah, well, and, and we're always uh, willing to come in and help, obviously. But uh, just for your listeners, uh, give you a little uh, hint here. Uh, if, you're, if you run into a problem, don't presume it's, it's VMware. Presume first that it's, that it's Oracle and, and work on tuning Oracle and, and optimizing the performance of Oracle. And more often than not, you're going to find where, where the problem is. Uh, it, a lot of times people presume that the, that the problem is in the configuration of VMware, and so they go there first, and that's where they run into problems. So, so maybe, maybe the advice is, is if you're running v Oracle and VMware, start with, okay, call Oracle, say, hey, I got a question on how to configure Oracle, what the best practice is on Oracle. Now, of course, they're going to say, what are you running? Well, I'm running VMware. Okay, but maybe ask questions about Oracle or right. find Absolutely. answers about Oracle and try to attack that side of the equation before you even go down the VMware rat hole. And, and that's been our experience. House of Brick is, is started out 13 years ago as an Oracle performance company, as an Oracle optimization company. And so that's what makes us good, and it's what makes us good now, even running on VMware. Yeah, so, uh, so you're here at EMC World. I mean, EMC World obviously has an interest in, uh, in virtualizing Oracle applications. EMC's doing that in-house. We have uh, Sanjay Mershandani on tomorrow. Um, um, EMC is doing a lot with Oracle they applications, sure doing a lot yeah. with SAP applications as well. Um, they're sort of, I think, one of the leading edge companies. I mean, it's their business, so they damn they well are. better yes. be. Um, so what's your relationship with EMC? What are you doing here at the event? Uh, our relationship with EMC is a, is a great one. Uh, good, 
good uh, partnered relationship. We we have a, a subcontract relationship. So what EMC does is is when they run into opportunities where their customers are running Oracle, where their customers have uh, have application stacks that are running on Unix, uh, whether that's Solaris or AIX, HPUX, and they want to to replatform onto uh, an x86 architecture to take advantage of some of the cost savings and the performance improvements, then then they bring in House of Brick to to enter that conversation because we know how to take those applications and bring them onto the new hardware and the new uh, virtualized infrastructure and really make them perform well. So EMC uh, recognizes the value that House of Brick uh, does brings in enabling them to do their business better. We enable them to sell V-Blocks. We enable EMC to, to sell uh, storage. We enable the VCE uh, uh, company to, to, uh, to sell their product. So we don't get in the way, we, we enable their sales. And I think that's what makes a good uh, partnership with House of Brick and EMC. One of our, you've met David Floyer, uh, one of our lead analysts, and he has said flat out that, that VMware is, is the most robust platform for enterprise applications. Uh, I, I presume it's safe to say you concur? We do. Is that yeah. right? And he said, it's, look, it's just far more mature than Oracle VM. That's just the way it is. Um, hands down. It he is. Has, he has said that. Why? What makes it hands down better than, say, for instance, Oracle VM? Uh, I sat in the uh, keynote from Paul Moritz, for, uh, CEO of VMware, this morning. And, uh, and Paul talked about how the, the ESX hypervisor is the component of VMware that's becoming the... the the least prominent, if you will. I don't remember the words that he used, but he talked about all of the other tooling and, and all of the other uh, advantages that VMware brings. And so the, the ESXi, which is VMware's free hypervisor, uh, might compare to something like Oracle Virtual Machine. But VMware has done so much to put tooling and, and application support and other things around their hypervisor that really make uh, VMware much more mature. The, the operational benefits of VMware far uh, um, outpace what we're seeing on Oracle Virtual Machine. We have customers who, for support or certification reasons, want to try Oracle Virtual Machine. And many times, uh, of course, we help them with that, but many times they find that they're not getting the performance, the, the, uh, the tooling that they need, and so they ask for our help to then migrate back onto VMware. Well, but you can understand, based on my, my intro where I was talking about you know, Oracle wanting to own the stack, you can understand why Oracle doesn't want to appear to be overly supportive of, of VMware. They're trying to freeze the market and so that they can get their act together in Oracle VM to right. the point where they can compete more effectively. And it's, companies do that all the time. I mean, EMC announced a Hadoop distribution today that won't be available for many months. Right. Well, yep. why pre-announce something? Well, you pre-announce something so you can you know, build up market momentum and maybe freeze some of the momentum of some of your competitors. Right. And Oracle's very, very good at that. So you, you can understand that. Um, but I think that, as David Floyer has pointed out, this is an inevitable trend, and, and VMware seems to be at the, at the heart of it. But the other, so, and now, we had some people on the call last week, Bill Santilli in particular, who said, listen, I'm not going to do it unless Oracle certifies it. Um, and, and, and or at least, you know, guarantees that they're going to support it uh, forcefully. Now, uh, that's the other end of the spectrum. A lot of the customers that we have have said, look, I'm going to do test and dev, and Bill agreed. Test and dev, no brainer. Start there, gain experience with the platform, and you wouldn't right. disagree with that, would you? I would not disagree. Test and dev is a great thing to do on, with Oracle on VMware, and that's a great place to start. If customers truly are concerned about certification, then House of Brick uh, has some best practices where we can configure uh, the, the virtualized infrastructure to quickly migrate to a, to a hardware. If, if that's what they want in their, in their infrastructure so that they can move quickly from virtual to, to hardware, we have some best practices to make that uh, happen in a matter of minutes rather than a, a long a protracted period of time. Well, we've seen today the, from, and we saw yesterday from Pat Gelsinger, the, the statistics, I think there were IDC numbers that showed that there's more physical, more virtual servers shipping now than than, than physical servers, there are more virtual applications than physical applications, right. uh, or more applications that are virtualized. So, so we're seeing that tipping point. Um, it's happening, it's inevitable. Um, VMware's not the only one. Um, Hyper-V's out there, and they're right. doing a good job. They're yep. growing very fast. Uh, um, you know, it's you know, free, they changed the whole model, and taking a playbook out of the old Microsoft. Now, of course, VMware executives know the Microsoft playbook, so they see what's coming there, but, but that's a, that's a fast-moving game. Citrix, um, obviously, very, very strong in the desktop. 
Right. Uh, but Zen is, uh, is is a force as well. So you've got, you know, three prominent players out there and others. IBM's got its own technology. Now, of course, Oracle. So, so there's a vibrant market out there. Uh, VMware clearly is the leader, and I think you've you backed the right horse in, in our opinion. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but what advice would you give to those practitioners that are saying, look, Nathan, I'm really nervous. I, I don't want to bet my business on, uh, I don't I get fired for not doing VMware. I mean, I might eventually if I don't cut my cost, but I'm afraid. I'm afraid not to go, uh, or, or, or to go with uh, uh, VMware because Oracle's not going to certify it. What would you tell those guys? Well, uh, what I would suggest is, is starting small. If you haven't virtualized uh, your test and dev environments on with Oracle, uh, start there. Start by, by putting a test and dev onto a virtualized infrastructure and, and look at the advantages that you're getting out of that. The next thing to try is maybe identify a small uh, project where you could take something into production uh, and, and, and start to, to see what advantages you can get out of a, a production grade uh, Oracle uh, installation on VMware. And it, it's our assertion that there are some tremendous advantages that you can get by doing that, and and it will outweigh some of the other concerns. Uh, but but I understand that certification is an issue for some uh, organizations. So the next thing I'd suggest for for the Oracle customers out there is to go onto my Oracle support or or MetaLink and do a search and and look for all of the uh, and search for VMware. Look for all of the cases. That are that are VMware related, and look at how many were uh, bugs related to VMware. Uh, we haven't found any out there in, in Oracle's database. We haven't found any VMware related bugs that people have reported, and and we have a lot of customers that are working with Oracle support. So so start to start to uh, satisfy your own concerns about about this issue of support versus certification. Oracle does support VMware. Uh, and, and we've seen that time and again with our customers. Uh, the last thing I'd recommend is take a look at the Oracle certification matrix. The Oracle certification matrix certifies operating systems on chipsets. Oracle doesn't certify any particular brand of hardware. And so on the Oracle certification matrix, uh, VMware lives underneath that operating system level, where, where Oracle typically, typically certifies down to that level. So if you can, it, that, that may be a way that you can satisfy yourself that uh, that support, the Oracle uh, committed support is sufficient. Well, and I want to make it clear, Oracle will certify uh, uh, VMware. This is one of the findings that we came out of the study in the pharmaceutical industry. It's well known that Oracle certifies VMware. You got to pay it for the nose, but that just underscores that there's no technical reason. Um, we're talking to Nathan Biggs, uh, CEO of House of Brick Technology, the foremost uh, VMware Oracle consultant. Um, if you need help configuring Oracle and VMware, Nathan's your man. Uh, you got a great team. Nathan, thanks very much for coming indeed. on theCUBE. Thank you, Dave.